G'day viewers, in this segment I'll talk about wireless security. So there are many important kinds of wireless networks, cellular networks come to mind for instance, but in this segment I'm going to talk about wireless security in the context of 802.11. I think that by doing so you'll get a sense of how wireless security is different than wired security and the pro kind of problems we need to pay attention to, and we'll also discuss a specific wireless context that should be of interest to many of you. Okay, so let's start with the, the goal and threat model. Again, just to be clear what kind of security it is we, that we are trying to provide. And the key difference, which you should realize between wired networks and wireless networks, is this. That the wireless messages are broadcast to all nearby receivers. This is very different than your average wired setting, in that uh, you, you don't need physical access to the network in the same way to be able to use it. Um, and it heightens security problems. Here we have in the figure we have Alice and Bob communicating using a wireless network and the dotted line means that they're inside you know some building, maybe it's your home apartment. Now Trudy and Eve are outside this apartment. If this were a wired ac a network they would not directly have access, but it's dotted because actually the signals leak to all nearby locations and Trudy and Eve can receive messages from this network and they can probably send messages to this network too. I've called the uh, attacker there Trudy and Eve because uh, um, they may have different capabilities. We could consider eavesdroppers who can only just hear messages and are interested in understanding what they say, as well as intruders that send messages to use the network. Okay, so there are, there are two main threats that we're going to consider. The first threat is that of eavesdropping on conversations, um, reading the contents of your mail and so forth as you send information across that network, seeing the web pages that you're downloading and all of this sort of stuff. Um, you know, this is a little bit like our recorded conversations that always seems to make the newspapers on cellular networks. Now it's on an 802.11 network. So the first th threat is this eavesdropping. The second threat that you might not have considered is unauthorized access to the network. The network uh, it is going to provide access to authorized clients, but it needs some way to be able to tell those authorized clients apart from other clients who just happen to be near enough the network to use it. And as I said before, we're going to focus on 802.11. When the setting here for Trudy and Eve, you can see it says that they're external attackers, so we assume they don't have access to the equipment and so forth, but they can receive and send messages. He really receives messages Trudy would be able to send them to. So for 802.11 the overall picture is that we're going to secure the network for all of access control uh, to determine to ensure that only authorized parties can use the network as well as confidentiality, integrity and authenticity on messages, probably freshness of some kinds too. And the way we're going to do this is with a security scheme which is uh, in which everything is based on a password to gain access to the network. This is the network password that you usually have to enter into a laptop to use an 802.11 network. Security is built into the 802.11 standard and it has been from the beginning. The original security scheme actually was this thing called WEP which stood for Wired Equivalent Privacy. You've probably heard of WEP, if only because of all of the security problems it's had and the many articles saying that it can be cracked and it shouldn't be used. Uh, this is true. The design of WEP is badly flawed and it's easily broken now using off-the-shelf software that you could get, uh, even by Eve with no physical access. The more recent versions of security uh, are built into 802.11. They're part of the, uh, the, the 802.11i substandard. This is known by the trade name WPA. Two. Uh, well, WPA stands for Wi-Fi Protected Access, and I think I want to put a 2 here just to say the version you actually get on any standard device these days should be WPA2. WPA1 was an interim version which never sort of went anywhere. It was draft. It was only on the way. So the real standard is WPA2. And this is what you should be using when you use any modern wireless network where you have control over the setup. At least if you want to uh, provide secure access to the network and um, to uh, provide confidentiality and integrity and authenticity of your messages. In terms of our protocols, let's just look at a diagram to make sure we understand what uh, 802.11 security is actually doing. 
here's the protocol stack and you can see down here we have 802.11. Uh, IP will be above for nearly all uses of the internet and the yeah, protocols above that, well it depends what you're doing, I've just shown examples. Security such as WPA2 is built in to 802.11. But now since we are operating at the link layer, this 802.11 layer works between uh, a client and an AP, say. So the security has been provided only over this wireless link, not further on here as we go into the internet. The packets would be unencrypted according to 802.11 security as we went into the network. Of course, it's just operating over the 802.11 link. Also, in terms of encryption and the protections, what's going to happen if we look at a frame here? Here's an 802.11 frame. It's the contents of the frame that are encrypted. The header still needs to be sent in the clear with addresses in the clear so that the receiver can understand that the message is intended for it and so forth and who it came from and all of that. So usually with all of these encryption schemes, they provide encryption for the contents of messages, but not everything, not the header. So we can still see the devices between which messages are flowing. Okay, so that's what 802.11 security does. I'd like to just talk briefly about two different settings in which it can be used. So you can relate the, the way you use it to the different settings. The first setting is your typical home network setting. And in this setting, the AP here is set up with a network password. This is where you have to enter the password for the network. And the actors in this system really are just your clients, like your laptop and your AP. Um, every client or every user who has a client who's going to use the network also knows the network password, or they need to, to be able to access the network. And what happens is the client proves to the AP that it has the network password, and if it can prove that, then the uh, AP will grant the client access to the network and all of the messages that are sent between the two will also be protected, encrypted and so forth for good measure. Um, and of course the, that is just over this link, even though many of the packets from the client will continue on to the internet or they came from the internet. The encryptions are just over the link between the client and the AP. Going into a little more detail, this is what needs to happen for the client to use the network. Well, to provide access here, the client authenticates to the AP. It basically needs to prove to it that it has the right to use the network because it knows the password for the network. And the way this is done is that both the client and the AP compute a shared session key that's based on the password. If the client can successfully do this, then it's really proving to the AP that it must, if it has this shared session key and the key's right, it can prove to the network that it must know the password and therefore it's allowed to use it. And all of this is done in a way such that the client doesn't simply tell the network its password in case it's really talking to the wrong party because the client doesn't trust the AP at the beginning of this exchange either. So they're both authenticating one another. Once we've done that and then we have the session key, really everything is set because we can then use the network with the client and the AP encrypting the messages using their shared session key. And this will provide all of the usual properties we want. Moreover, uh, no access is provided to people who don't have this shared session key. So if you don't have this session key, you can't read any of the message, messages that have been sent. And for completeness, I'll also tell you that there's a group key. Um, the session keys are between APs and individual clients. The group key is something the AP uses if it needs to broadcast a message to all clients. Okay, let's look at the authentication step in a little more detail. Whoa, okay, well here's a rather hairy diagram. We're not going to go into all of the details of this diagram. It's beyond what we can cover quickly. I presented this just to show you the exchange that takes place. We'll talk about it a little. There's more detail in your text and online. Essentially what happens here is that both on the client side, so by the way, this is one of our time sequence diagrams. Time runs down the page and you can see the exchanges between the client on the left and the access point on the right. Essentially both the client on the left and the AP on the right are going to compute a session key. And if they can both compute the same session key, then they're in business, they've authenticated one another. Now this session key is based on several inputs. It's based on what's called a master key. Well that really just comes from the password processed in some way. It comes from nonces for freshness to ensure that both of them are actually talking to a live party right now who's doing the computation. And you can see each side sends a nonce to the other side 
because each side doesn't trust the other side yet. It wants to make sure that the other side is really doing some work on this as a new exchange. And there are also other inputs to the session key, such as the MAC addresses, the, uh, the, uh, that's the Ethernet addresses, of, uh, or the Wi-Fi addresses of both the client and the AP, just to bind everything together. Now, once they've both computed this session key, they're in business as soon as they prove to the other side that they hold the session key. The uh, AP distributes to the client the group access key, which is used, the group key, which is used to rebroadcast from the AP. If the client can get this message in the right format, then it knows that the AP has the same session key and the client knows it's a real AP it's talking to. The client then sends an acknowledgement and if the AP can um, understand this acknowledgement and decrypt it into the right format, then it knows that the client also has the session key, so everything's good. And then after this, we have the messages, the data messages, which are sent across the network and uh, uh, with encryption to protect them, and they can be unencrypted by the other side. So that's how 802.11 is used in a home network setting. There's one other setting that I'll tell you about without going into the details. And again, this is really just so you know the different ways 802.11 security is used in practice. The other setting is an enterprise setting when you use um, 802.11 inside a company network. And the difference here, you might wonder why is this different than a home network at all? The difference is this authentication server. There's not usually a single password for the network in a company. Instead, all of the users in the company, they have some credentials for an account that's been set up on a server. So each client, you know, that's a user of the company network. And uh, what the access point does is it, for new clients, it provides a path to, for them to talk to the authentication server and only the authentication server. The client and the authentication server then go via, through an exchange via the AP. And if the client's successfully able to authenticate, then the AP learns that it was successful and it then grants it access to the network, setting up all of the session keys and so forth along the way. So that's an enterprise setting and you can see it's different. I haven't told you all of the details of how it works just because we don't have enough time to go into it, but there's always more interesting stuff to learn in networks. So that's wireless security for 802.11.